Good everyone, welcome to this video, and today we have the return of a series that hasn't had a lot of love. The Forgotten Vehicle series. And I realised when looking back through the channel and everything, I completely skipped, well I pretty much skipped Russia, which was... don't know why I did that, to be brutally honest. So, there is going to be a bit of a change to this format, um, which I'm going to have to explain. So recently Thunderskill has been very unreliable, as in the website's either down or the information from what I've seen is quite inaccurate. So we're doing a bit of a change to this series. And what I mean by that is we're going to be including vehicles that, in my personal opinion, I don't see played. So, as you can probably tell... There's six vehicles here, because obviously I'm going to be keeping the series at six in the, the respective nations. Obviously, I don't always have six cruise slots in nations, but you get my point. Um, but yeah, essentially, this is going to be a bit of a change to the series for the better, because, as I said, Thunder Skill is unreliable at the minute, and it just feels like it's the best option for this series. Now, obviously, we will be going into tanks for this, but obviously tanks is a little bit harder to distinguish because 99% of the time, because there's less tanks in the game than there is planes, at least if I remember rightly, um, it will be harder to distinguish what is forgotten in tanks than what is for planes. But I'm sure we'll figure that out as time goes on. So, starting us off, we have the I-16 Type 18. This is an I-16 which I very rarely see. I think I've only seen a handful of these recently. And I've been playing all over the BRs and everything like that, just to get things done and everything. And just in general, relaxing, like skin grinding and things like that. And in my last few weeks and everything, I have not seen a single I-16 Type 18. Now I can think of a, a pretty good reason for that, and it is the simple fact that it's 0.4 of a BR lower than one with cannons, and the Type 24, which has the better engine, doesn't have the cannon, but does have the machine guns that this has, and the 24 doesn't get much love either, because I don't remember the last time I saw a 24. That gives you an idea. So this is the sort of idea that we're going to be going with. And as you can tell down here, we've got some good contenders, especially this sack of crap. But we've got some things that you might not expect, like the Yak 9B. I don't remember the last time I saw one of these things. And it's one of those series that obviously needs to come back because it's been nearly a year since we last did a video on Forgotten Vehicles. And it's just something that I think would not only benefit because... It gives us something else to really look at. But also, I know a lot of people really enjoy this series. And I don't really want to let it die off. But, yeah. There is something that um, can be brought as a positive. Because at the end of the day, this series has not died out. This is arguably one of people's more favourite series. Looking at views compared to the other videos on my channel... This series actually gets quite high views compared to some of the others. So we're going to keep on doing it. So, the I-16 Type 18, I have covered on the channel before in a Talisman series episode. But other than that, I've not really given this thing much love. And I'm really sorry for that because I enjoyed the Type, 6, or the type 18. So, because I've waffled on a bit too much, how about we go see how it does? Obviously, it's a rank 1 2.3 aircraft, so if you're planning to do your dailies in this thing, unfortunately, you won't even get to do the first one. But, this is the thing, like, I'm sorry if you can hear me moving and the mic and everything. Um, it's, it's a series that I think needs to come back, and, well, by the time this video comes out, you would have seen that there is another series returning as you would have seen on Christmas Day. Obviously, you not many people would have probably watched that video. But, yeah. There's going to be a little surprise for you all. Let's just say that. If you've not seen it. If, you, if you've not seen it, go back and look at it. 
because I think people are going to enjoy the return of the series. Um, and by that point, there will be a thumbnail designed for that and everything. Because I've, I've already got ideas for how to structure that. But yeah, I think you guys are going to enjoy the return of a series which, if you're an old folk to the channel, you'll know it off by heart. But if you're new to the channel, it'll be something entirely different. Let's put it that way. I'm just watching that Spitfire right now. What the fuck are you doing? Is he squatted with someone? Uh, yes, he's squatted with a Spitfire. He just tried to ram me. Already off to a fucking great start, and then they get rammed by some dickhead in the 929. I bet I'm gonna get team killed right here. You watch. He's gonna TK, I can just see it coming. What the fuck is he doing? I think he's gonna be a wing waggle. Am I getting TK'd here, or are these guys just flying in formation with me? Because they've not seen a Type 18 in a while. I've got my fingers ready to snap roll, if necessary. I mean, if I survive the gun pass from an I-29, yeah. I don't normally let people get this close to me, fun fact. like when they're flying with me, like even with squad mates that I trust, just because it, it's just force of habit. I've always had like that nerve that just kicks in. I mean, you, you saw with the I-29 player, he was very fishy. Now that that's over and done with, I will see you all in the match. Well, once we get there. Well, you're welcome. you are welcome back to the match. As you can probably tell, we've got a lot of enemy aircraft to deal with. But first, I must reclaim stolen Soviet property, which, to be fair, I don't know why I would want this thing back, but, you know. If you can finish it up, that'd be fine, because I'm probably going to need the ammo for later. There we go. He's probably going to steal it, but I don't give a fuck, because we've got a lot to deal with, and I'm the only person to have climbed. Which probably means Joe's dead, because that is a cannon staying. I mean, it could be worse. It could be a P 51C. I mean, it can't be because. Yeah. Why is my. That trick normally works, so I don't know what's going on with my G lock at the minute. Okay, I'm losing control of the plane. The, the rudder's misbehaving here. For some reason, even though this plane goes into its turn and everything fine when you kick the rudder to balance out the g-lock for some reason the elevator sticks on full like it just keeps the elevator at full whack that's strange that's very strange I don't know if it's an issue with the mouse aim but yeah and there goes my teammate. Wonderful. I'm on the defensive for now. That's the only problem here. Right, the one night he's bringing it back around. I don't know if as well it's down to the center of gravity of the aircraft because the I-16 is quite... It's, its center of gravity is very awkward sometimes if you bring 20 minutes of fuel. I would have brought 10, but 10 ain't enough. 10 is not enough. And I checked the player card of that I-29 player, there goes him for kill number 2. Um, he's like level 14 I think. And uh, yeah. I don't think I need to be worried, but you know, there's always the chance that he could come back and potentially try to TK. I mean, not now, but he's dead. But you get my point. It's always good to keep an eye out on your surroundings. So, Corporal Dumbass and his BF-109E7 is taking a head-on with a P-38E. 
And instead of turning back towards me, he's just flying straight where the P-38 will catch him anyway. And the only other plane in the vicinity to help him is the goddamn DB-7, and that ain't its squad. Because it's a DB-7 who tried to steal the burning DB-3 earlier. So, target priority out of this lot is actually going to be the P-51. Due to its firepower, its decent handling if he knows what he's doing with it. And most importantly because he's coming right at my fucking face. So as you can see there, as I snap rolled there to get the plane onto position, the plane just did not want to maneuver that well. If I don't know if you saw that, but I certainly felt it. And is he going to throw it away to deny the kill? Pretty much. Saves me ammo, shit stain. But yeah, you've got to be very careful with this thing, it seems, because it's very awkward. The other I-16s don't feel like this, so I'm not sure why this one does. That being said, it still kicks ass, so I definitely don't have a problem with it. It's just a little bit awkward, I'm not used to it. That's all. If you're an inexperienced player, it might catch you off guard, but... Oh, he's not going to make that. Nope. And there he goes, he's binned it. It's just that P-38 left now, who is naturally running back to the fucking runway. Let's have a quick look. Level 6. Inexperienced. And he's just running straight to the fucking runway. Of course he is. And unfortunately, on this map at least, the only ground targets that are in the area are medium tanks and trucks, which ain't gonna do squat. Let's have a look at the rest of his team, because they could be encouraging him. No, nope, he wouldn't. He definitely would. I mean, just look at that. I heavily suspect that that Zabodge is causing, well, telling him to go back to his airfield. Oh, he was a Stuka player at the start. Right, well, that's, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, you go back to base, buddy, because I'm going to need you to start bombing bases at this rate, because, unfortunately, we might have to deal with a scumbag camper, and it's just me and you left, mate. And against P-38E, uh, in an A-16, it can be done, but I wouldn't throw it past him winning this engagement. But we'll just have to see. Hopefully his inexperience helps me a little bit. Because the P-38E, whilst it isn't an amazing plane, it's still better performance-wise than I am. I don't have a visual on him at the minute, so... Okay, now I do. He doesn't appear to be landing. Which is okay for me. That's a bot. We don't need to be concerned about that. Okay, whatever that was just crashed. So he must be landing, surely. In that case, we're going to conserve some fuel. Because we kind of need to. But yeah, I definitely think Zabaj is encouraging him to runway camp at this point. Which is annoying because, yes, we can load up bombs and things like that on this plane. But, um, the A-16 only has limited weapons options. The DB-7 can't really do a lot against those tanks. And there goes that bot, just got shot down by the AAA. So, yeah, we kind of have to hope. And I've just seen his dot. I think, is he taking off? I've lost the dot now. Nope, I see him. There he is. Right as he came up on the thingy. So, our best option here is to force him to come at us head on and then I'll try the zero trick. Which, it doesn't normally work in an I-16 because it's not as agile, but I'm sure it will do just fine. Even though this thing's a little bit awkward. So, here's the zero trick. Let's see what he does. And now, cut inside of him like so. 
keep an eye on him for the turn. He is coming into the turn. That is okay. The awkwardness is not helping here, but that's okay. We'll just keep an eye on him. He's forced a maneuvering fight, which he will not win. And there we go. That's what you get for camping against a DB7. And that is kill number four. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Just a shame this little fella's only rank one, otherwise it it would be a fun little thing to have for um for like your rank two daily or something. Because more options is always nice. Like maybe they could do like they do with the lags, like the late and early ones. This could be a late one paired in and then you have the twenty seven on its own. I don't know, it's Gaijin, they'll probably think of a bullshit reason. Just remember that is not an actual ace, because um, obviously there was the bot in that match. So not a bad little result there. Obviously, the aircraft did feel a little awkward, because obviously normally whenever I do a rudder turn to cancel out G-Lock, normally the elevator shouldn't stick on, but in that case it did. So you've got to watch that if you fly this thing. But, I don't think this thing's bad at all. If you want to play something that's forgotten, this is definitely an option to pick. Next, we are going to be doing one that I'm sure Harry, excuse me, will be enjoying himself. Which, I believe he has done a video on this aircraft and he loves it. The SU-2 TSS-1. Again, don't remember the last time I saw one of these little things, because I either see the M82, the MV5, or the BB1 itself. I never see the TSS. But, I'm sure it'll do just fine. But anyway, I'm going to leave you all to it. I hope you enjoyed today's return of the Forgotten Vehicle series, and if you haven't already, go and check out the, uh, well, the December 25th video, which is a brief announcement for the return of a new series. Well, I say new, but you get my point. Anywho, I'll see you all on the next one.